Hi, my name's Phil, I like talking about politics and in this video I like to discuss some of the features of the interview on the BBC with Michelle Moan, the former Tory peer being chased by the National Crime Agency for ripping off the nation during the PPE scandal of 2020. It was an interview that uh, maybe puts the BBC on the spotlight as much as Moan and her husband as well. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel. So really quickly for those unaware, Michelle Moan and her husband, Doug Maraban, are being investigated by the National Crime Agency over their involvement with a public contract for PPE from 2020, which was not fulfilled properly. They made off with a large sum of money without delivering the equipment as specified in the contract. The investigation is taking a very long time and it has involved having their homes and business offices raided a year and a half ago. Um, they brought out a propaganda video very recently to try and get public opinion on their side, I imagine, in which they reportedly duped some people to appear on it without realising what it was really about. They have both recorded an interview with Laura Kunzberg at Broadcast Today in order to achieve the same aim. Now, there are several things to query immediately. The first is, are the BBC being careful what they're doing here? Because Moan and Barrowman are subject to an active criminal investigation. Now, I'm not saying journalists and correspondents should be keeping their noses out. No, they should not. You know, we expect reporting of important cases like this, but they need to make sure that they're doing it in a way that's really reporting in the public interest. And Laura Kunzberg's not really ideal for that. But then my second thought was, who's really benefiting here from this interview? Moan and Barrowman are doing this to try and get public opinion on their side. I, I, I don't think they'll succeed, but more, I'll come to that in a bit. Why are they trying to get public opinion on their side though? They're being investigated for possible criminal offences. The investigators are not going to be swayed by a public opinion poll. So I would speculate that they're probably doing it in order to persuade the Conservative government to call the NCA off. Maybe they're feeling the heat now. They don't like the way the investigation's going, perhaps. From the public point of view, the investigation could be going nowhere, as far as I can see. You know, we found out it was happening, or I found out it was happening at the beginning of 2022. A few months later, their properties were raided. And then since then, what? But maybe they know differently. They've already recently admitted lying about their involvement with PPE MedPro, the company that was set up at the heart of the scandal. This company did not exist. It was set up specifically to take this money. They've also admitted lying to the public, making anything they say in an interview with Tory party staffer Kunzberg highly suspect. I'd also throw something else into the mix. So there were a lot of Tories and mates of Tories who effectively swindled the public by being given these VIP lane contracts and then either delivering the right goods but at an excessive price. We know from a recent report, on average, contracts given via this VIP lane um, cost 80% more than the same equipment, the same standard of equipment being ordered through normal suppliers. So that was one way in which the, the public were fiddled. But the, the other way, the worst way, the one that uh, PP, MedPro, Moan and Barrowman are accused of, not delivering the right goods at all and keeping the money anyway. So not only have we been swindled, but care homes, hospitals, clinics and so on were not getting the PPE that they needed, which cost more lives. And there are lots of people and companies that need investigating. But as far as I know, the NCA are only going after Moan and Barrowman. Why? I, I've wondered if they're maybe a little bit like uh, Roman Abramovich. The, the Tories sanctioned the former Chelsea owner over the invasion of Ukraine as a way to make it look like they were going after the oligarchs. Abramovich was easily the most famous Russian oligarch in Britain. So he was potentially used as a bit of a distraction because few others faced any sanctions at all. I've sometimes wondered if maybe Barrowman and Moan were similar. They were so indiscreet about the amount of money they took from the public that because the, the focus of the media investigation was on them, it was like going after them, the Tories got to shield everyone else who was potentially just as bad. It also helps them 
uh, defend their own behaviour in awarding the contracts. Because after all, if they blocked a criminal investigation, they put themselves in the frame. So I'm not sure I see Moan or Barrowman achieving anything here, even if they did get the public to think more kindly of them. It, it, I mean, I don't think it will. But, but it won't sway the N NCA on a matter of law. And I don't see it swaying the Tories on what's probably for them a damage limitation exercise. Remember that the COVID inquiry has not begun to look at PPE procurement yet, but it's going to. It's one of their modules. It's coming, not coming soon, but it is coming. And when it does, and, ad and actually I will just say this as well, when the COVID inquiry is looking at that, we are going to have a Labour government. It is going to be after the election. And when it comes, the Tories need scapegoats. Not that I, I think, as I say, that they even would sway public opinion with this interview today. There's like there's a real disconnect with Moan and Barrowman. Like the problem is that they they may genuinely feel they've done nothing wrong. I can absolutely accept that they're thinking, oh, what's all the fuss about? There's a huge difference in the way Tories like this see business and the way I, for example, see it. Like I see a business, it provides goods or services that people value, that's why they buy them. Sometimes those goods or services are harmful and the government should restrict their sale. For example, we would not think it right for assassins to be able to openly advertise their services, would we? So we expect that with certain businesses, for the government to legislate either against those businesses altogether or at least to restrict their activities. My attitude is that a business has to justify its existence in terms of its benefit to society. Their attitude is that it justifies itself in terms of profitable success. If it makes a profit, it's therefore a good business. That's it. That is the only measure. And this was full, fully on show in the interview. They really thought they'd done nothing wrong. Because as far as, I, as far as they're concerned, they were awarded a public contract by the government. They managed to negotiate a, a, a large um, fee for it effectively. And they think that's good business. You know, they argued that the profits were not excessive, given that the risks they ran. And, and they argued that the risks were considerable. I'm thinking, well, what risks? The government were their cons customer. This wasn't a case of someone saying, oh, get us all this medical equipment or we'll give you 203 million quid. There, were, there was no chance of them having to acquire the goods and then the government not honouring its contract to pay them. In fact, the government clearly paid them before it had checked the goods were, were correct as required anyway. But it's not just that they were talking bollocks, it's the attitude. This attitude that you can justify that sort of profit. Now, to be clear what we're talking about here, the total profit was £67 million for two contracts totaling £203 million. That is a 33% profit rate. Even if they fulfilled the contract properly, which means no one will be going after them, it's perfectly legal, that is a 33% profit on a public contract. There is no justification for that at all. And that's where I think that they have that disconnect with the public, which is why it will fail. They probably genuinely think that they've justified themselves, that it's all fine. After all, you know, if they, if they thought to themselves, this isn't justifiable, why say it? But I don't believe the public will think it's acceptable. You know, they may feel genuinely aggrieved that others did the same as they did and don't appear to be facing investigations. I can get that. I can appreciate that. Mind you, as Labour have promised to go after every penny of COVID fraud in office, I think they soon will be facing investigations, don't you? Which is another reason why the Tories would be mad to suddenly try and put pressure on the National Crime Agency to drop the case. Labour would just start it up again and a whole load of others and the Tories would just look even sleazier. Moan and Barrowman are claiming that their only offence was lying to the public, which they say they did to protect their children. Now, just to be clear, their children are not actually children, they're adults. And they also benefited from the profits made from this scandal. So the entire exercise is all very weird. It's really hard to see that they can achieve anything realistically. In fact, I think I was thinking all they're doing here is putting themselves at greater risk, aren't they? What they've said has been committed to camera. Now, it might be that they've said nothing that they haven't already told the National Crime Agency, who will have been interviewing them several times. But what if they've said something which does incriminate them with the investigation? Because it sort of put me in mind of, you know, when like there's a high profile like kidnapping or murder, particularly of a child, and the police suspect someone close to them, 
but they're all pretending they're really concerned. So the police persuade them to lead a press conference to appeal for help from the public for information. But what they're really doing is watching them to see if they slip up. I wonder if this is the same. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.